Hi, welcome to The Daily Stand-Up. I'm Denise Kwan, and I'm a developer advocate at Cisco. And I'm El Delgado, developer advocate at Cisco. So today's topic is a question that I've had for quite some time as a dev. Um, we often see the terms operations, SRE, and you know, what is the difference between the two? So I ask you that question, Mel, because I know that that is what you had been doing prior to this role. Yeah, I, I, I've done a lot of that in my career is mostly things in uh, related to the term of operations, I guess. And if I could add another one, Denise, um, IT. Okay. IT is another one that gets mixed in there somehow. It's either IT, sysadmin, operations, all the way out through uh, SRE. So I'll, I'll take a stab at it. So first of all, it, for uh, I'll start with SRE. So SREs are mostly focused on making sure that the application runs in production when it's something like a SaaS service, for example. That's going to be, I think, one of the important pieces that it's 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 typically for a SaaS. So it will be facing the consumer right off the bat in some kind of web-based format, uh, typically. So that in that in that discipline, if you will, as an uh, SRE, what they're they're highly highly focused on, making sure it runs, and in doing so. They look at metrics. Uh, they're looking at mon monitoring is crucial for that, right? It's crucial for that discipline. So they're looking at metrics primarily so that they can establish what are called uh, service level objectives. And those service of le level objectives roll or are derived from service level uh, agreements. So that's typically service level agreements, so SLAs. Those are typically legal agreements. That gets into like a lot of the um, legal stuff that we typically don't worry about. I mean, we worry about fulfilling our obligations, but not necessarily the language or what goes into that SLA. We, uh, for SREs though, we, we are focused on the objective. The objective of making sure that we have some number, some availability of uh, 97, 98%, whatever it is uh, of, of uptime for a particular service, that might be something. And then you're gonna have these service level indicators. Now, the indicators will come from the metrics. So it'll tell us something like, okay, our, our storage service needs to be up by this. Like we can tolerate this much failure. Once we start going outside of those numbers, that's when we start saying, uh-oh, we're, we're somehow missing the mark. So we always look at those indicators to do that. Now, that's super oversimplified, but that's in a nutshell what the SRE does. Now, if we're looking at IT, IT is going to be looking at making sure that accounts are taken care of, uh, the infrastructure is up and running for whatever reason, whether or not it is a SaaS offering or not. IT is, is very, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very broad, broad field that can be applied on-prem, in the cloud. It, there's just a, a, a lot of different places that an IT practitioner uh, covers, if you will. Operations, operations, I think is in some ways is probably a little bit more, and that's typically when you match it up with a dev and ops, right? a little bit more focused on the cloud infrastructure, making sure that whatever cloud elements are put together operate in a way that is conducive to running the application, whether that's a SaaS or not. Uh, it could very well be an application for something that's run strictly internally. Say, like for example, the infrastructure for an airline. It does have a SaaS component to it, but it also, meaning like it, it, users can access it from the internet, but it also there's a lot that uh, of infrastructure that runs internally just to make sure make maintain and make sure that operations run smoothly internally. So I think what what um, happens very often in the industry is that we and you'll see this in job descriptions, the terminology gets used a little bit loosely and sometimes incorrectly, so that that you know so sometimes people find themselves like they apply for a DevOps position and. You know, a month or two later, they're like, "Wait a minute, this, this, this kind of feels like system administration, or this kind of feels like an IT type of role." So, so you, you can see that sometimes it can be confusing. So, I could, for maybe uh, the viewers as well, watching this this show and watching the daily stand up, it, it might feel the same way. It's just a little bit confused as to, "Wait a minute, it's being applied in all these different ways," and it, it you know, sometimes is that really an SRE role? Is it an ops role? Is it an IT? So yeah, lots of different ways of looking at it, but if you look at it just strictly from a what you do type of perspective, as in the uh, like the description of what somebody does, it can help you sort out at least the duties and figure out like which bucket that fits in.
I'm hoping that helped. Yeah, so can we conclude to say, like, operations is more in charge of the infrastructure for whatever application is going to be put on it, and then an SRE is more concerned that this infrastructure is running properly, that it is not going to get too high CPU, you know, monitoring how it is running. And so can we kind of vaguely put those two distinctions between the two? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think it the one thing for SREs is they're, they're highly focused on the application, making sure it runs and it's always available. And yeah, if the infrastructure needs to uh, be, you know, part of that, uh, part of that equation, if you will, then most certainly SREs will be taking care of that. So let's just say like a SRE sees on their, um, on their monitoring that the CPU is high. Are they going to go tap back to the operations folks and try to, to, and be like, Hey, there's something going on with the infrastructure or is that something that the SRE is going to do and try to figure out themselves? I, I would first look to the organization and figure out how the organization is running that application. So if that's running, say, on-prem, which is completely acceptable, uh, an acceptable approach. In fact, one I think we, we like, we encourage, we, we enjoy. That's how I cut my teeth, so to speak, yeah. uh, in, in both environments. So if it's something that it gets passed on to, like an operations team, perhaps. Sometimes it organize, organize such that the folks that run the infrastructure itself from the ground up is part of the SRE team. So they would they would issue, uh, they'd probably open, you know, a ticket for that. So it really just depends. So they'd probably like a JIRA issue or something and say, hey, you know what, I'm seeing something that's that's gone sideways. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, uh, CPU utilization here. What's that related to? So sometimes a CPU, it could be a bug. It could be in the application itself. So that's where a lot of SREs will probably have some discretion in, in determining where the cause of that problem is and then addressing and finding the right team to address that. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that definitely helps. Um, another term that we always now hear is DevOps. So how is that? I, and we can go dive into this in a future episode of yeah. everything DevOps, but just, I'm sure that as people are watching this, they're like, okay, we talk about ops, SRE and IT, but we all hear DevOps is, how is that any different? than ops itself yeah i think yeah that's a uh, yeah I'm, I'm glad you brought that one up too i, I probably should have mentioned it earlier so with devops it, you'll see that devops are uh, more and more what you're seeing is this trend of like a devops engineer if you will being described as someone who takes care of the underlying development infrastructure because you know there are always different layers to the cake, right? So to speak, I, I've always said it that way. So if you have on-prem infrastructure, you have the servers, if you will, that are running something. On top of that, you'll have the operating system, perhaps, or maybe it's a hypervisor. Uh, keep on going up the stack. If you're uh, running container orchestration, then someone is looking after Kubernetes. Someone's looking after all of those pieces put together. When you now start, and that, that's all infrastructure, if you will. Developers also have infrastructure, and that's. What I, I see is like almost like a conveyor belt. And you hear the term CICD pipeline used quite a bit. So who maintains that? Uh, are you using uh, Jenkins, for example? If you're Who's running Jenkins? Who's making sure that Jenkins is actually running? Uh, maybe you're using Concourse. Maybe you're using some other tool. Uh, so someone's running that infrastructure. Someone's running the infrastructure to make sure that, say, Vault is running for your your secrets to maintain your secrets and so forth. That's typically your DevOps engineer. Your DevOps engineer is, is very highly focused on improving that process, making sure that it's running, of course, and doing everything they can to optimize that so that you have this CI/CD pipeline, which I I kind of refer to like almost like the conveyor belt, where everyone's putting like code and what happens when you check that code in. Uh, do unit tests automatically run? Uh, is there some kind of you know, security check that goes with it? Um, <clears throat> is there some sort of pen testing that occurs as, as part of that, that, that whole process? That entire process typically is, is looked after by DevOps engineers. That said, I've also seen DevOps engineers start to operate a little bit more like, by the way, the label. I see people going into that role and then finding like, gee, I kind of feel like I'm an IT person or whatever. So that's kind of where you start to see that distinction. Somebody who's doing IT work, mm, nah, you know, I don't know. That's 
DevOps, I, I'm not I'm not so sure. It, more and more what I see in the industry is, is looking after the CI CD pipeline and all of its tools. I guess we should have hired a DevOps person because us devs had to go and install our Jenkins and make our CI CD pipeline ourselves. Um, but you know, as I think, you know, we did agile very early. So that was probably way before the whole trend of DevOps and being it. So it showed that there was a need for somebody to, to take care of this infrastructure. Um, and so I think that that, for the most part, I, I like you said, it's vague only because it really depends on the company and a lot of different companies do things differently and they are using terms that interchangeably. And I think that that's where the confusion is. It's like, okay, I know there's like a whole stack of stuff at, below the dev and, um, you know, who does what. And so I think that for the most part, it gives a clearer picture of what is you know, operations, SRE, DevOps, IT, um, and hopefully it helps our audience and other devs who are afraid to ask their operations um, and worried that they're going to be offended of, hey, what do you actually do? Because I think some people might get offended off of that. <laughs> it reminds me of like office space. Yeah, what was that? What would you say it is you do here? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's also it, it's something that I, I encounter a lot is it, you you uh, touched on that point earlier is is when, you know, when you're asking about other people's roles, it, it's it's a matter of not skill, it's time. Mm -hmm. So I think we all have some level of base sort of skill. So, you know, for example, writing code. And it's like, well, ops people don't really write code. Well, actually, we do. We, we write a lot of code because we want to we want to automate everything. Right. So could we be doing other things? Well, sure. Just like a dev could dive right into operations and start doing that. And like you were saying, if, if you're maintaining and then, oh yeah, the platform, if you're maintaining like Jenkins and so forth, that's less time that you're yep. applying to writing and maintaining the application itself. So I think w when you look across the board, I think we have very similar core skill sets, but how they're applied and what label, you know, where is applied to that and which bucket it falls in is probably something that's, you know, I, I think just the industry makes it a little bit confusing sometimes based on the hiring practices or even sometimes just some of the talk out there. I, I, I understand how it could be confusing, but hopefully this hopefully this clears it up and, and, and is research based. Um, it's, it's based on some of the things I've read from uh, or I've, I've read almost all of oops, I've read almost all of like Gene Kim's books just humble and they you know I, I i was doing a lot of these things just sort of nodding my head just going okay i think okay i think i get it i i get i didn't know why until i read some of these books that really helped me organize my thinking in these areas well i think uh i think hopefully i've answered your question and now we are headed to a very exciting time in Amsterdam. So we're going to do Cisco Live 2023 in Amsterdam. I am super excited to fly out there and join the community in lots of different things. I'm going to be giving a talk on starting, getting started with automation, like where on earth do I get started? Another one with Terraform. So automating things uh, in Intersight, Cisco's Intersight with using Terraform, as well as uh, just getting started with Jupyter Notebook and how you can apply that in a very basic way to start learning some Python and to start using some of our APIs. Well, I'm also going to be there at Cisco Live Amsterdam. And I, talking about Python, um, I am actually teaching an advanced Python class, a workshop, um, which is hands-on and also being on an inclusive in tech panel where I can talk about being a female in tech and what I've learned from it, how I broke the glass ceiling and how I'm here today um, and hopefully being inspirational to other female engineers that want to get into roles like this. Awesome. Well, I hope, I hope I'm not doing a session at the same time because I'd love to attend. Uh, I'm, I'm not like, you know, it's not on my schedule to, to be speaking at a time. If not, I'm going to catch a recording afterwards. So thank you so much, Denise. And thank you for joining for another, or joining us for another episode. This is a daily standup. Thanks for watching. Bye.